Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue on our playlist on pulmonology and lung diseases and upper airway diseases. Today we'll talk about nasal polyps and we will answer the two cases or the two questions of the case of the previous video. Thank you for hanging around. Nasal polyp is like a polypoid or a teardrop-like mass coming out of your nose. What causes a polyp? All right, here is the nice epithelium that lines all of your cavities, including your nasal cavity and your sinuses, your paranasal sinuses. And then let's say that there is a basement membrane, whatever, whatever. So this epithelium sometimes is going to do something like this, called a polypoid mass. This is the story of the nasal polyp, and let's get started. Let's answer the question of the last video. Three-year-old Caucasian boy presents to your office, parents, cough, cupfuls of pus all the time. Every day they have to put him in the prone position in order to clear his lungs of pus. He's an adopted child and the family history is unavailable. On speculum exam of the nasal cavity you notice bilateral polyps. What's the next best step in management? Please pause. Okay, let's digest that. Whenever you have a kid on your exam with nasal polyps, it's cystic fibrosis. Take it to the bank. Does that mean that in real life every kid with nasal polyp has cystic fibrosis? No, but every question on your exam is fake. It's like when you read a newspaper. Do you think the newspaper is an accurate description of reality? No, they only publish what's quote newsworthy. Cystic fibrosis is exam worthy. That's why you, they love to ask you about it. Bilateral polyps, cystic fibrosis if it's in a kid. Now if you have a polyp in an adult, it's usually allergic rhinitis or allergic rhinosinusitis. So this is cystic fibrosis. Caucasian, because cystic fibrosis is commoner in Caucasian, especially Northern Europe. So Scandinavian countries and stuff like that. Okay, they have to put him in the prone position to clear his lung of those cup folds, like huge amount of pus. This is bronchiectasis. So let me give you a pearl. When they say that a patient is coughing sputum and this sputum is large amount and it's described as cup full of sputum there are two probabilities this sputum could be made of mucus and in this case the disease is chronic bronchitis if it says cup fulls of sputum or of mucus or this sputum could be pus as in this case and the answer here is going to be bronchiectasis baby but please don't forget, the question has to describe the sputum as large amount, huge amount, cupfuls of sputum. If it's the sputum is mucus, it's bronchitis. If it's pus, it's bronchiectasis. If it's a kid, the bronchiectasis is usually due to what? Cystic fibrosis. So what should you do to diagnose cystic fibrosis? You cannot just like diagnose it clinically. You need some labs. And the answer here is the chloride sweat test. Because in cystic fibrosis, there is a problem with the chloride channel. It's called CFTR. And we shall talk about this later when we talk about cystic fibrosis. And there is a drug to treat cystic fibrosis, which is a CT CFTR potentiator. And this drug is called Ivacaftor. And we have discussed this in my previous video called Respiratory Pharmacology. That's why you should watch my videos in order, please. So now we know it's cystic fibrosis. The second question, which of the following is likely to be present in this kid? Now pause. And the answer here is bowel obstruction. Why? It's called meconium ileus. Because in cystic fibrosis, all of your secretions are so thick because there is no chloride, there is no sodium, there is no water in the lumen of any tube that secretes. So you have very thick secretions in your nose, you have very thick secretions in your trachea, you have very thick secretions in your lung, you have very thick secretions in your pancreas, that's why you have pancreatic insufficiency, you have very thick secretions in your GIT, that's why you have meconium ileus leading to bowel obstruction. Why not coanal atresia? This is not the charge association, and I've talked about this in my previous video called coanal atresia. Why not duodenal atresia? This is Down syndrome, probably, on your exam. Why not atopy? Because when you have a nasal polyp in a kid, it's not allergic. On your exam, it's always cystic fibrosis. Why not hyper? Again, it's not allergic. It's not allergic. This is cystic fibrosis. 
Why do cystic fibrosis kids have nasal polyps? Because this is due to a chronic inflammation. This chronic inflammation, chronic inflammation, chronic inflammation on the same tissue, and then the polyp will emerge. Nasal polyp, definition, soft tissue mass, teardrop shaped, non-neoplastic that arise from the mucous membrane of the nose and paranasal sinuses because the sinuses open into the meatus through some small openings in the meatus. What's the nasal meatus? Please watch my previous videos. It's whatever below the coena or below the turbinate. Usually due to chronic inflammation. Epidemiology, usually bilateral, most common in adults 40 years or older, male commoner than female. In adults, it's usually allergic, i.e. IgE-mediated, mast cell synthesization and degranulation and histamine and all of this crazy stuff. If it's in the kid, it's not allergic. On your exam, it's cystic fibrosis. Why? Cystic fibrosis, thick secretion, inflammatory nasal polyp due to chronic inflammation. History of the patient, let's say the adult with allergic rhinitis. Usually there is a triad of asthma, nasal polyp, and aspirin sensitivity. Collectively, this is a syndrome or this is a disease. Do you know what's the name of the syndrome? The answer is in my aspirin videos and it's gonna be in my playlist called bleeding and coagulation disorders. Symptoms of nasal polyps, stuffiness of the nose, runny nose, absolutely. Feeling of fullness and pressure in the face because it's in your nose and these are close to the sinuses. Decreased sense of smell, no wonder. Post nasal drip, sneezing, it's your nose, signs. Non-tender mass, because it's like it's a chronic inflammation, it's not an acute inflammation, where it, which is like tender and redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. There is no such thing because it's a chronic inflammation and it's usually bilateral. If it's an adult, it's allergy. If it's a kid, it's cystic fibrosis. Diagnosis of nasal polyps. Clinically, nasal smear, you'll find eosinophils. If it's a kid, it's, it's cystic fibrosis, do the chloride sweat test. But if it's an adult, we usually don't do the chloride sweat test. You can still do it, but it's usually done in kids. Association of nasal polyp, chronic sinusitis, absolutely. Algae or asthma, yep. If it's a kid, it's cystic fibrosis. How to treat those polyps? If it's allergic, avoid the triggers, antihistamines, inhaled steroids, oral steroids, but use for a short period of time only if the condition is severe. In cystic fibrosis, you treat the freaking cystic fibrosis. Forget the polyp right now because the polyp is a result of a chronic inflammation. You want to treat the polyp, treat the freaking chronic inflammation first. All right? It's like when your kitchen is flooded with water. First, you close the water tap or the faucet. Then you clean the water. You don't just, okay, let me wipe the water. And then the faucet is still dripping water in the kitchen. That's not a solution. You cure the freaking inflammation first, honey. So how we treat cystic fibrosis? It's hard. Oral pancreatic enzymes. Why? Because the secretions are so thick, they clog those um, tiny tubes in the pancreas. You end up with pancreatic enzyme insufficiency. That's why you need to take pancreatic enzymes. Antibiotics such as inhaled aminoglycosides and estriolam or oral estriolam. Inhaled hypertonic saline. Why? Here is your nice trachea. In cystic fibrosis, the secretions are so thick. Inhaled means it's introduced in your nose, and this is hypertonic saline. What's the hypertonic gonna do? It's gonna pull water because there is more sodium in the tube because it's hypertonic, that's the definition. When it pulls water, it's called osmosis, water comes in, makes the secretions thinner instead of thicker. Also, DNAs or Dornase alpha is mucolytic. Ivacaptor is a C. FTR potentiator because the problem in cystic fibrosis is in the CFTR. So you potentiate the CFTR, CFTR, you're trying to cure the fibrosis. Surgical removal can help, but please be aware recurrence is common because there is always an underlying problem, a chronic inflammation and allergy, cystic fibrosis, etc. If you don't cure the underlying condition, it's gonna come back again. And it's very hard to know the cause of atopy. Could be pollen, could be dust, could be a cat, could be a dog. It's, it's unbelievably hard. Case number seven. Are you ready? This is the same freaking kid with cupfuls of pus all the time. On speculum exam, you found the bilateral nasal polyps. He has a past medical history of bowel obstruction due to meconium ileus, as well as pancreatic insufficiency. The question is, which of the following organisms are more likely to be involved in a respiratory infection at this age? 
all of you were looking for a certain answer so i just didn't include it in the choices okay now here are your choices staph or is your senior pestis mycoplasma pneumonia borrelia burgdorferi babesia microti or vibrio cholera let me know the answer in the comments you'll find the answer in the next video in this great playlist we'll talk about rhinoscleroma next if you are a student watching this, I know you are struggling to learn Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Ebola virus, E. coli, Staph and Strept and all of this crazy stuff. Picmonic can help you with that. They have great animated video-like medical mnemonics. Please check the link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. I have more than 100 cases on Facebook. I have even more cases and all of my notes on patreon.com slash medicosis. Please help support this channel by going to Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. Love you all. Until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.